Clinical shoulder case. Adam, Warren, Mark, and Cody. Let's go see our patient, Sarah. That wasn't good enough, Warren. I want to see you do a hundred more. I know we've been working on it all day. Keep going. But coach, my shoulder's been hurting pretty bad. Wow. From my experience as a professional tennis instructor, this could be a, a chromioclavicular joint injury, bicipital or rotator top, cuff tendonitis, peripheral nerve damage, or a slab lesion. But I'm not a doctor. You should go get that checked out. Okay, coach. All right, so a little introduction. Our patient's name was Sarah. She was 40 years old, and she was complaining of shoulder pain, specifically in the superolateral shoulder on the right side, and she had limited movement in shoulder flexion and abduction. Some possible causes that we looked into for this shoulder pain were rotator cuff tendonitis, bicipital tendonitis, peripheral nerve damage, a chromial clavicular joint injury, or a superior labral from anterior to posterior lesion, also known as a slap lesion. Possible nerve damage. The nerve that would be damaged in this region of the body would be the auxiliary nerve, and this is responsible for innervation of the deltoid and just that entire region, so the joint and the superficial skin also. Some symptoms of auxiliary nerve damage are numbness of shoulder region or weakness in the shoulder region, and some possible causes can be a direct injury or long-term pressure on the nerve. Let's check out and see how Sarah's doctor's appointment went. Sarah, it's nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Dr. Linton. Yeah, um, my name is Sarah, but feel free to call me Warren. That's how most of my friends call her. Right? Well, I'll call you Sarah for now, but okay, yeah, sure. Yeah. So, what brought you in today? Um, so, my shoulder's been bugging me, um, and uh, you know, I used to be a runner, but I just started playing tennis. I don't know, maybe that has something to do with it. Okay, yeah, maybe. Um, I mean, have, you, have you been playing a lot recently? Been trying anything different? Well, my coach, um, Mark, yeah, he, he makes me practice my serve a lot. He says I really need to work the power, and probably like four hours a day, I'm just working it. He says I'm pretty good at it, but um, he, he's kind of mean too, but that's that's kind of whatever. Uh, um, sorry, yeah. But um, yeah, it kind of hurts like on my overhand serve, yeah. and then also when I'm blow drying my hair, I also notice it bugging me. Does it ever bother you at any other times when you're sleeping at night, watching, you know, like just hanging out watching TV and anything else? Not really. No. Just kind of when it's up here, I mean, I sleep like a rock at night. I okay. love watching TV, but my shoulder never hurts when I watch TV. Okay. Well, well, you know, from what it sounds like and from what I think uh, a lot of people say, it could be a few things, but from what it sounds like, if you are having a lot of overhand um, practice and when you do your blow dryer, it's the same thing. We let that arm um, that shoulder socket, um, typically what we see is uh, a slap lesion. Um, that's usually what I think because it's not, is the pain, is it at one spot that you can tell or is it not? Oh, um, it's like right there. Just anywhere in there kind of, it's not really, yeah, yeah. yeah, okay, yeah. so that's, typically if it's anything else, it's usually a specific location yeah. in there, it's really kind of tough to tell. All right, so it looks like Sarah was diagnosed with a slap lesion, type 1 or type 2 specifically. There are four types of slap lesions. Type 3 and 4 are bucket handle tears, and these were ruled out because there's no locking in Sarah's shoulder, which is common in bucket handle tears. Type 1 slap lesion is caused by fraying of the superior margin of the labrum in comparison to type 2 which results from separation of the labrum from the bony glenoid. So that's when the labrum actually comes apart from the glenoid. The, just exactly what the labrum is, is it is fibrocartilage in the shoulder and it's responsible for stabilizing the shoulder um, when it's moving around. It shares an attachment with the bicep muscle and bicep tendon and slap lesions are very common in patients who do a lot of overhand activity just like Sarah with swinging her tennis racket. 
some symptoms of slap lesions are popping or clicking of the shoulder socket. That's really more for type 3 and 4, which Sarah wasn't experiencing that. Um, another symptom is pain when the arm is raised above the head. So just like when Sarah was blow drying her hair, she was having pain. And then weakness or irritation is present in the shoulder. So Sarah's shoulder is obviously hurting her and giving her pain. Let's go back and check out what else Dr. Linton has to say about Sarah. So a slap lesion? What does that mean for my recovery, Doc? Well, usually what we do is an arthroscopic surgery, um, that, which uh, it shows you kind of where exactly that tear uh, occurred. Okay. Um, so you're looking to recover in about, you know, a, about eight weeks. We usually work on your um, mobility of the shoulder, um, and then you should be back to normal in about you know, a few months. In. So Okay, great. I have uh, tennis nationals at the end of May, so okay. that will be awesome. Yeah, I know you should be definitely ready for that. All right. All right. Well, thanks for coming in, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks, okay? All right. See All you, right. Doc. Sounds good. See you later. All right. So treatment for a slap lesion. The most effective treatment is surgery, um, and the exact surgery is dependent on what type of slap lesion you have. So surgery for a type 1 slap lesion, they do an arthroscopic surgery, and they go in, and they go in with a camera, and they're able to see the injured area, actually make the diagnosis, confirm the diagnosis, and then they remove any debris or any damage they'll fix in there. Um, but it's a uh, not very invasive surgery whatsoever. The second or the surgery for type two slap lesion is also also an arthroscopic surgery, but it's a little bit more invasive because they have to sew the labrum back to the glenoid, and they do this by using surgical sutures, and they just tie it back in, and it's kind of like stitching with a needle. They just sew it back together. Let's go check out. War or Sarah's visit to the physical therapist. Hi, hi. How are you doing? <laughs> Good. I'm Sarah. You can call me one, though. I'll call you Sarah. Uh, all right. <laughs> so you just had your uh, surgery? Yeah. Um, it, it, I think it went okay. Okay. I'm ready to get it strong. Yeah. So with that slap lesion, we're going to spend these first eight weeks together. We're going to be doing uh, mobility exercises. Okay. So get geared up for that. All right. What kind of, what am I working on? Really just... Get your mobility back, because obviously you're immobilized right now. Oh, true. It's kind of so get the like mobility, this. then after that we'll be able to work on some strength stuff. Okay. One eternity later. What's up, physical therapist Adam? Look at the shoulder. Got the mobility back. All right. It's time for the real work. Nationals is in four months. Right. You're gonna win. I will be your. Physical therapist, I will not be your friend. If you need one, you can find them on the internet. Okay, we are going to strengthen your shoulder girdle muscles and your rotator cuff muscles. So we're going to be doing a various amounts of exercises to just get the strength up so you can play some tennis. All right, I can't wait to play tennis! All right, so... There is a non-surgical route to go with slap lesions. It's only an option for type 1, and it's usually unsuccessful. Um, so most of the time it's not recommended because a lot of the time patients have to get surgery afterwards anyways. But the non-surgical rehab focuses on two muscle groups in particular. First, it focuses on the muscles of the shoulder girdle, and these help you regain that scapulothoracic motion. And it also focuses on the muscles of the rotator cuff, um, and this helps with your glenohumeral internal rotation, um, which a lot of athletes with overhand motions have a deficiency in this called GERD, and it also stabilizes that shoulder area because the rotator cuff muscles are really important in stability. For those who do go the surgical route, so most patients, there is post-surgical rehab, um, and it's pretty similar to the pre-surgical rehab, except following surgery, the patient's arm is going to be immobilized in an internal rotation, rotation position, which is just in a sling. Um, and so it's kind of immobilized right after surgery, other than when you're at rehab, because rehab starts in that first week 
Um, and patients are normally in that sling for two to three weeks, but when they're at rehab, they're able to take it out of the sling. And the first eight weeks of rehab really focus on the mobility in that shoulder region. And then after those first eight weeks, the focus shifts from mobility um, towards strengthening the shoulder muscles. And the muscles that are targeted in post-surgical rehab are the same ones that are targeted in pre-surgical rehab. So it just focuses on those shoulder girdle muscles. Um, and the uh, rotator cuff muscles also. Causation, so slap lesions are common in injuries in athletes, especially athletes with that overhand motion. Um, and a few ways they can occur, they can occur if the arm is forcefully abducted while it's flexed. They can also occur with shoulder dislocations, but in our case with Sarah, it occurred from overhead motion, specifically repetitive micro traumas in comparison to one major trauma. So it's just really that repetitive um, serving motion. The tennis serve. In the tennis serve, the objective is to produce as much energy as possible, and there are five phases, the wind up, early cocking, late cocking, acceleration, and follow through. And that uh, whole motion is really what caused this injury. It's really that overhead motion. So some prevention for this injury. One big thing is just ease into new exercises. Don't not don't start as a novice tennis player and end up practicing four hours a day your first week playing tennis. That's going to be hard on that shoulder region. So really just ease into new exercises. Let your body build up those muscles um, so you're not injuring yourself. Work on that shoulder stability. So. Um, even before the injury happens, strengthening those rotator cuff muscles is really helpful for prevention of this injury. Um, so just focusing on strengthening those muscles will help with that stability. And then the last thing is strength control, which is really just practicing good form and making sure you have a good coach who knows what he's teaching you. So let's go check out how Sarah did in her tennis tournament. It is my great pleasure to honor Warren Sarah Melton with first place in the National Tennis Tournament for the 40-year-old women. And it's both fun. Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks, Sarah. Congratulations, coach.